All right, folks, welcome to Arduino for Beginners. This is Arduino 101. Today we are taking a look at HW-040, also known as a rotary encoder. Now mine has a fancy knob on it, but uh, you don't necessarily need that. I just think it looks cool. And there are several different styles of these. The rotary encoder itself has five pins and you are going to plug them in as follows. So they should be clearly labeled on the encoder. The one that says CLK, you are going to plug into pin number two. The one that says DT, you are going to plug into pin number three. The one that says SW, you are going to plug into pin number four. The remaining two are positive and ground. You will connect those to five volt and ground. So let's check out the code real quick before we take a look at what it does. In the beginning, I am defining those three pins, CLK, DT, and SW, and then I am going to declare some integers. So I have a counter, which starts off at zero. I have a current state click integer and a last state click integer. That is for the button that is included in the rotary encoder. Not only does it turn around, but it clicks inward as well. And then I have a string, which is the current direction. We're going to use that to print which direction we turn the knob and an unsigned long, which is the last button pressed. And we're going to leave that equal to zero for now. And then we go into setup. You have your pin modes for those three pins, two of which we are going to set to input, but SW is going to be set to input underscore pull up. And we are going to turn on the serial monitor here. And we are going to set our last state click integer equal to the initial state of the click pin. So then we're going to move on to our loop. Pretty straightforward. Everything is uh, pretty well. Let's get this out of the way a little bit so you can kind of see here. Um, so if the current state click is not equal to the last state click and current state click equals, equals 1, which means if the button's clicked in, then we're going to do this and it's going to do a digital read check the current check that it's not equal to the current state click and the counter will negative negative so this is actually not our button here this is to tell if we have turned the knob left or right when we turn it left it will decrease from our counter and when we turn it right it will increase our counter and you'll see what i mean by that in just a minute we can use those positions to do different things in our code and make a state machine or something like that and I'll show you how to do that in just a second as well um, but this is where we're concatenating our strings and putting them out to the serial monitor so you can see which direction we've turned and which number we're at on our counter variable we're going to last state click equals current state click so we're remembering the last click state and then we are going to read the button state now this is actually when we click it in so um, basically doing the same thing as up there we're saying equals digital read off the SW pin if that is equal to low then we want to pause for a second and print the button was pressed and then we want to remember the last time the button was pressed and the, and the time so put in a slight delay to help bounce the reading um, this right here basically keeps it from just cycling through and not changing um, because it's reading the same thing so a little tiny tiny delay but it is a necessary delay so let's run this now and I'll show you what this rotary encoder does it is done uploading let's grab my serial monitor bring that in here where we can see it and now I turn the knob to the right you can see uh, it's actually going backwards from what I want, so I'll have to change that. But it, the number is going down when I turn it to the right. And the number is going up when I turn it to the left. Um, we can kind of cage these variables and make it so it rotates between a certain amount. We'll do that in a second. But let's check the click real quick. And there it is, button pressed. Button pressed. Okay, so let's make some alterations to this real quick. Now, um, I want it to go in opposite directions. So I'll change this to plus plus, change this to minus minus. 
now. See if counter is greater than two. This will give us three states. Counter equals zero. We're gonna do the opposite of this here. And this is basically saying if we go out of the range of what we want, then pop back around to the other side. So let's try this out real quick. Extra one of those, I don't need that. So, um, now I can do this. Or not, and I'll look like a fool in a second, but I think I fixed it. Yep, there we go. Okay, so now let's check out what that does. So, that should keep us in between zero and two at all times. So one, two, I'm turning to the right now and it's going up. One, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. That's good, so let's try going backwards. One, zero, two, one, zero. Okay, so why is this important? Well, Let's add another variable to our code here. We're going to set it equal to our counter for the moment. And down here at the bottom of our loop. State equals counter. Just adding in a couple of variables here so you can see. So if I were to change these in here I could do anything I want to happen at that different state. So we're gonna make a couple more adjustments. So scene one, scene two, scene three, these could be all sorts of different uh, things in your scene here. Um, anything I add in between these brackets here is going to be printed when I'm in that scene. So how do I change scene? Well, let's go up to our button pressed. And we want to say Let's go back. I don't want to set that. I don't want to set that equal to counter. Okay. 
here I want to say uh, which one was it current state Looks very similar to what we just did. But it is not. So this should allow us to click the button and iterate through these different states, which will each print one of these continuously, depending on which scene we are in. So let's go ahead and upload it, see if everything works. serial monitor one more time here all right so <clears throat> now when I click it it should change to scene two and then scene three and then it should go back to scene one and that's good it's still reading my inputs from turning here um, but basically what you can do is use the road reaction of going left and right to scroll up and down vertically through a menu and then when you click on that item you can turn to the next page or next scene which is full of different items now this is something they do on 3d printers uh, rotary encoder is a pretty common way to manipulate the uh, firmware inside your printer which quite often will run on an Arduino board or one very similar to it um, so this is very very cool to be able to play around with you can add as many scenes as you like and each of those scenes can do something different now, I'm wasting a lot of time here just replaying the same thing over and over again. I could have it just print once, but uh, I like the live action kind of knowing what's going on there. Um, that's going to be it for this one, guys. We'll have more coming at you with more sensors. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.